He doesn't do things like this very much anymore. The media, the spotlight, the interviews, all exercises he says for the most part he can do without as he enters his mid-60s. He sat down with us just moments after his induction into the South Carolina Hall of Fame, an honor and moment that truly appeared to take Pat Conroy by surprise. Pat, with your induction into the South Carolina Hall of Fame, you have recently joined the ranks of the most famous South Carolinians, dead or alive. Did even you ever expect that? No, and when I was looking at some of the people formerly inducted, I thought, John C. Calhoun must be rolling in his grave tonight. Uh, some of those Civil War generals must be doing backflips in their graves tonight. It surprised me a great deal. I never thought this would happen to me, ever. Those first two books created dramatic controversy, both within Conroy's own family and his extended family and friends all across South Carolina. In 1976, when he published The Great Santini, the depiction of his dad as an abusive Marine Colonel fighter pilot so outraged his own brothers and sisters that for years some of them refused to even speak with Conroy. Three years later, in 79, it was made into a successful Hollywood film with Robert Duvall starring as Conroy's fictional father. Uh, my father, The Great Santini, I thought he could do anything but die the toughest man I ever saw in my life. Here's how tough he was. My cousin interviewed him one time. He said, Uncle Don, Uncle Don, you could carry nuclear bombs on your plane, but you couldn't have used them, could you? Like, you couldn't have bombed Atlanta, where a lot of your family lives, where you live. You have too many friends here. Could you have bombed them? My father, said, without hesitation, boom. <laughs> Few of his stories capture the essence of life in the low country any better than his 1986 classic, Prince of Tides. It followed the story of unemployed school teacher Tom Wingo, who's trying to come to terms with his dysfunctional family's past. The book is a favorite of Conroy's wife, fellow writer Cassandra King. It also inspired an entire generation of new Southern authors. Last year, I sat down with Dorothea Benton Frank, a best-selling author in her own right, who owes much of her inspiration to none other than Pat Conroy. I asked Dottie Frank what one book she would have to have with her if she were stranded on a desert island. I love Pat. I mean, I love Pat personally, Your and I love his wife his? and his kids. Oh, probably Prince of Tides, mm -hmm. you know. I, I, this is so funny. You, you have to use this. Don't cut this out, okay? I'm talking to Pat once, and I said, so, Pat, you know, I really love the Prince of Tides. He goes like this. He goes, my wound is my geography. And I was like, oh, please. Is please. that real? Yeah, no, that's the first line in the Prince of Tides. He's, he is hilarious and, and wonderful and very generous, you know, with his support. Recognizing that your family has obviously reacted to uh, many of your past works uh, where you expose the inner ills, with the advantage of hindsight, do you wish you had done it any differently? Probably not. <laughs> um, yeah, it's hard for me, and I would tell Dad this. I said, Dad, it's hard for me to write a scene like this. Come here, son. I want to swing you on the swing, or I want to do, I can't even imagine that. Come here, son. I'm taking you to ballet lessons. Because it but didn't it, happen. It just, I mean, I cannot bring myself to write a scene like that. It doesn't make any sense to me. And, you know, Dad, boom, you know, I can write those scenes. I told Dad that when I first wrote The Great Santini, people did not believe anybody could be so bad. And I said, I got my brothers and sisters together, and I said, okay, they don't believe a father could be this bad. Is there anything I'm leaving out? Did Dad ever do anything nice to us our whole childhood? So they're sitting around, you know, thinking. I said, did he ever screw up and do something nice? So they're thinking, <laughs> what? And so my brother Mike finally said, 
No, he never did. Not once. I said, did he take his house to buy us some ice cream? No, are you kidding? And we couldn't think of anything. So I had to make up stories to humanize the great Santini. So editors in New York would believe in the character. And I love days like today because I think we now know enough in South Carolina that we each survive and send each other waves of language, different language. Uh, and that has made all the difference in South Carolina. And I cannot thank the state enough for finding me when I was a 15-year-old boy. Thank you very much.